but last week sometime I put together a, a, a matrix on configuring the MIDI channels on the Roland uh, to be optimized for use with the SD90 and I thought I would also take the opportunity very quickly to sort of show you the configuration on the SD90 that'll help you uh, get up to speed and, and play quickly and maybe eliminate any frustrations you may have in trying to figure out what the proper configuration is. So assuming you have set the Roland in accordance with the, uh, with the post that I put out there last week, what you'll do in the, on the SD90 is you'll go ahead and we will, let's see where we're at here, you'll press the menu button and then we'll go into play modes. And of the four play modes here, you're going to make sure that the uh, accordion style is highlighted. This is going to be the guy that you're going to always want. Okay. And uh, when you go in there, if I press and hold on accordion style for two seconds, I get uh, another sub menu. And on this menu, you'll see that the way I have it configured, and you might want to start like this, and then you can change it to meet your own needs uh, as you go forward is um, so obviously underneath the icon right velocity and left velocity left velocity these are uh, you know you have soft medium hard and fixed so I probably would um, I probably would set it for medium to start with and uh, your left it depends on how you play or what you want to do I'm probably going to set my left to fixed and then uh, I would leave that there you can use the uh, rotary dial to adjust the uh, velocity of the left hand if you do decide to use fixed velocity for your bases and your chords. And then uh, the other, I'd say the other important two that you have to consider is uh, bass to chord on or off. So this is whether you want the counter bass and the fundamental bass rows to feed the arranger. Um, so if you do, which would typically mean that uh, you're not going to play any basses whatsoever on your left hand, then you would want that on. If you think that you're going to want to play basses with your left hand and only have the chords drive the arranger, which is my preferred way of interacting, then you would have bass to chord off. And for manual bass, um, this is essentially when you press the manual button, on the front panel, indicating that you want to play basses yourself. Uh, do you want to um, do you want to hear basses and chords, or do you just want to hear basses? So in my case, I just want to hear basses because typically the uh, the chords are driving the arranger, and the default configuration is fine. And then everything else is is you can leave alone. Um, you know, I don't know from out of the factory. When we look at the octave here, if this is correct, you know, this is, this is a global change. So if you notice that your, for example, your, uh, your chords on your left hand are maybe an octave too high across the board, you'd come in here and you change that and you can uh, adjust it. But uh, to the best of my recollection, I believe that this is the, uh, these are the settings that I do use. And then I would leave drums off and, uh, and everything else uh, as a default. Okay, so that's that change. Uh, and then also now the next one would be, we're going to actually go into the MIDI environment. And uh, these, these templates here, you're going to make sure that uh, yours is probably delivered with standard. You're going to make sure accordion style and voices is selected. And when that's selected, you're going to go down to the lower left and you're going to click on Arrange Your Keyboard. And uh, so this, these are your MIDI channel mappings now. But you'll notice that the TX or transmit menus are is highlighted because it's yellow. We don't want the tr transmit menu because the we don't care what the SD transmits. We care what it receives. So I'm going to go over here and click on the RX button. And then, uh, again, I don't know out of the box what your configuration is going to be like, but there are three very important parameters here for the Roland. The first one is this one. So that's the right-hand channel. So if you followed my instructions from... The previous post, everything that you play from your right hand is going to be transmitted on channel 1. So you're going to want to set right to 1. Then you're going to go over here to the left hand, and everything that's transmitted from the 
Roland left hand chords, which is what left means in the context of the arranger, is channel three. So you're gonna set that to three. And then you're gonna go up here uh, to, uh, to bass, and you're gonna set that channel to channel two. Because from the Roland, everything that you transmit from the bass or counter bass rows, based on the configuration that was provided last week, should be on channel two. So that's it. That's what you have to know about configuring the SD90. So again, right hand is channel one, left hand is channel three, and that's chords. And, uh, and bass is on channel two. Just make sure that this RX guy is enabled when you do this. It's very easy to forget and have TX on. You'll come in, make your changes, and of course you won't realize that it's not working as expected. That's because you've modified the wrong menu. It's the receive side of the SD90. Okay, when that's done, you can press the save button, and if you press save, these defaults should become permanent. And when you power down and power on again, they should uh, retain their settings. The other, um, I, I can't, you know, again, I have to tell you that, uh, as I indicated in, in the MIDI mapping uh, post previously, I would turn expression off on the Roland to start with. Uh, expression can be very problematic when you're trying to debug a problem or you don't know exactly what, um, what its effects are going to be and on what parts of the arranger. And uh, it, it can be very frustrating when a voice doesn't play and you don't know why, and it's because you forgot to pull the bellows. Um, and, and so I would leave that turned off, at least certainly for a little while until you become familiar with the SD90. And then you can begin to turn that on only on those parts um, that are needed. The other thing that you might want to consider doing is that uh, in, if you press the um, menu button again, and you go into uh, registration setup. These are where you're gonna create registrations and the SD90 is very powerful in that you can save with your registrations a lot of the parameters and configurations that could change from song to song if you wanted. So MIDI channels could change. You know, the way we just configured that accordion could change because maybe you have some songs for the Roland and some songs for a uh, you know, uh, music tech or a different one. And so it's very powerful in that, you know, there's a lot of customization that it allows you to be able to do, but it can also lead to confusion. So in this particular menu, what I would do is I would go down here to um, play mode and I would, I suspect yours are going to be checked. I would make sure that these are turned off. And so what that means is that anytime that you load a registration that you may have saved, it's going to use the current configuration of the unit and not attempt to load a configuration from the registration settings. And that's, a, uh, again, that's typically the way we're, we're all going to operate unless we have a very good understanding of, of how the unit operates. And more importantly, maybe we're playing with different controllers and we want to be able to have them uniquely uh, differentiated based on their configuration. So that's an, another change I would make. So quickly we'll go through these um, one more time. So again, in the main menu, you're going to go to play modes. You're going to want to make sure that uh, accordion style is selected. And if you hold your finger on there for a second, you'll get this menu and you'll want to probably make sure that yours matches mine, excluding the base to chord setting. Uh, and that's really a preference of how you want to play with the arranger. So you'll have to make that decision. Okay, press the exit button to go back to the menu, go into MIDI, make sure accordion style selected, select arranger keyboard, bottom left. This is the important trick. Make sure you don't start modifying right here because transmits highlighted, you want receive. Click receive, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that right is set to one, Left is set to three, and base is set to two. Okay, and then if you want to change something in registration, that's really up to you, although I would recommend that you do that. You go in menu, registration setup, play mode, and make sure that none of the items are selected there. Okay, good luck.
give me some feedback. Let me know how the um, initial setup and testing goes. Uh, I forgot one very important thing uh, to mention, and that's um, when you go into the accordion style menu here and you've made your configuration changes, you also should save this. So press the save button. It'll say save accordion changes. And when you press save, then they'll be persistent. So you really have uh, two, three places that you want to make sure that you press save after you've, you've made your parameter changes. In play modes, when you're in the accordion style, you're going to press save in order to do it. Second place is in MIDI when you're in, uh, when you've selected this accordion uh, style and you've made your MIDI changes, you're going to press save. Boom. And that saves your MIDI channels. And then, of course, we talked about registration. And whenever you make your change here, you're going to press save and say save registration setup. So don't forget that once you get the unit operating exactly as you want in those three areas to press save so that when you power down and power back on, those changes will be persistent.